Welcome to the Sports MVT Insider, a platform where we are unrelenting in covering women in sport and celebrating their achievements, whether it be small or even some of the big moments that they achieve across all sporting codes. And today we have the honor of focusing on the sport of rugby. Yes, at this point in time in the country, everybody is excited after the British and Irish Lions tour came to an end. Yes, the Springboks were victorious with a 2-1 series victory. And now they shift their focus to the rugby championship that will be starting quite shortly. And we are most certainly going to see more exciting rugby. But when we talk about the Springboks, I would now like for us to focus on a different aspects of the Springboks, something that happens behind the scenes, somebody who manages the projects and somebody who actually ensures that everything is done well from a PR perspective. Now, she recently launched her first book titled The First Lady of Rugby, and she has spent at least 20 years behind the scenes at the South African Rugby Union, that being Saru, in the position of being the PR manager. And she now recently shifted to being the project manager for Saru as well. And her name is Anne Lee Murray. Anne Lee, how are you doing? Thanks, Aaron. That's a great introduction. Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Sports MVT Insider. I would love for us to start at the beginning. Where did you fall in love with sport in general? Well, I actually came, I came from quite a sporting family. Um, it was sort of ingrained in us, uh, a farming community in the Karoo. My dad played rugby for Eastern Province. He was a flanker. So I pretty much grew up on the side of the, the rugby field. And my mom was a very good hockey player. She played for the SA Universities. And uh, she also is still a golfer today. So we, we're pretty much a sporting family. Um, and going to boarding school, that was sort of your way of getting out, you know, so you kind of did as much sport as you could. So I, I loved all sorts of sports and it was my passion to go into sports. Absolutely beautiful. And I would like to take you back to 2000, the year when you started in the position of being the PR manager for, for the Springboks. Tell us a little bit about how you felt in that moment, because we all know what the Springbok means to, um, to South African rugby and also some of your duties and, and your responsibilities in this position. So, so when I was employed by South African Rugby, I was employed essentially as the PR manager for SA Rugby, not necessarily the Springbok team. Um, and that role kind of evolved as, um, as sort of, you know, media and PR involved, uh, evolved in the, in the country. So I started being in the corporate world with, with SA Rugby and looking after different brands, the, um, the Super Rugby brands from a South African rugby point of view, the Sevens brand, um, and pretty much, you know, the Springboks. And then a couple of years later, uh, you know, I was with the Springboks um, solely. And then, you know, after 2019, my, my journey with the Springboks came to an end. And I've continued just to do special little projects for SA Rugby along the way. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Now, let's talk a little bit about a national camp. I think we are seeing the box in camp at the moment. And for many of us, we don't necessarily see them until game day. Take us maybe through a day of national training camp, if we can call it that. And then also some of the PR logistics that goes into the big game day that we actually see on a Saturday or possibly a Friday. Sure. So, so you know, no two days are the same. You know, every day is different and you kind of have to adapt and think on your feet. It is a structured environment. So in saying that, I'm contradicting myself now, but things can happen. But it is a structured environment because with 50 people in a camp, you kind of need, you know, you need that structure. In the mornings, the guys will, will you know, will get up, they'll do strapping, they'll do um, their physio, they'll do their rehab if they need to. And then the day starts with um, with training. There's There's usually two training sessions on a Monday, two training sessions on a Tuesday, one training session on a Wednesday, um, and then a Thursday is is pretty much a, a training free day, but that's when you do your commercial and your sponsor and your PR and your media obligations, and also give the guys a little bit of time off just to relax and away from rugby, because that's also very important. Friday is specifically um, the day before the test, very structured, the jersey presentation, the, the going to the to the field. So wherever you are in the world, you go. Sometimes you're going to a new stadium and you don't know it and you can familiarize yourself with the change room and the tunnel and the, the field and the kickers can, you know, have a look at the 
at how the stadium is and where the wind comes from and all that kind of stuff, and they do their captain's run, that's when pretty much the um, the coach gives over to the captain, and now it's the captain's job. The next day, the captain leads the team, and then they play. So, so you know, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Um, you know, my friends always say to me, "But, but what do you do?" So the eight minutes, the 80 minutes that I that the the players actually play is the is sort of really the only time that you also don't you're not doing too many things because you're watching the match. But to take it to get there, you know, you have to dress the change room, you put the change the 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 jerseys out, wherever we were around the world, we tried to have a little bit of home home there. So we'd make it green and gold or, you know, our South African flag, just to familiarise ourselves with, you know, being at home and feeling at home wherever we play around the world. Wow, that's incredibly exciting. And I'm certain that many sports fans around the world um, would love to get to, to do what you do because I think putting out those jerseys is quite exciting as well. But I would like for us to talk about the change that we saw in your position. You went from being the media manager and then you shifted in 2019 or the beginning of 2020 to being the project manager for, for Saru. Tell us a little bit about the two differences between the two roles and also your new responsibilities in this new role. Well, well, I was a PR manager, actually, not the media manager. I did include some media. Okay. But um, but pretty much uh, when I left the team after 2019 was a great, you know, it was a great 20 year journey with the team. And that's what I've tried to record in my book and give a people that just a little bit of insight into that and what goes on behind the scenes and that people that, you know, the players are also human like like us. Um, but humanize the humanize the players. But the, on the project side, it's it's very much as and, and when. I'm not permanently with 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 them. I'm not permanently with the team. I look after a little bit of the commercial interests still, doing the photo shoots. So so um, in in that way, it's not you know team environment. Traveling with the team completely left that, and now doing projects along the way as is when needed. All right. Um, when we look at the world of sports and, and the sports industry, we have to admit that public relations are such an important part of, of the conversation. Looking at your 20 years being a PR manager and now shifting to being the project manager, how much has this role specifically changed and how important is the public? Well, I think, you know, that that so much has has changed. I always tell a funny story that when I started with the Springboks, and this is just to show you some of the Springboks there now wouldn't know what this is. They were um when when we started and we would we would go on tour, we used to have travelers checks. Now you probably don't even know what a travelers check is. Not at all. You would get the bank in, you'd come and they'd say, you'd say, Aaron, okay, Andy, I want um, 5,000 rands worth of traveler's checks. The bank would come in, you'd write a, tra they'd give you a traveler's checks in pounds or euros or whatever the case is. Whereas now you touch, you know, so you can you can use your phone to pay, you can use Apple iPlay, you can use what, you know, for um, Apple Pay, you can do anything and you can have a credit card and tap and go. So I think as as that has changed, so much has the digital age changed as well. So PR is, you know, you have had to move with the times, you've had to, you know, social media platforms um, have, have changed, players have their own voice, so the supporter can actually interact with the player and feel that 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 the actual interaction with the player whereas before it was it was sort of more more you know a, a structured and um you know um sort of you know uh, it would have to be planned and you'd have to get it out and you'd have to send a press release whereas now everything is just instant so the whole world has changed and in pr and marketing you've had to adapt to that as well Mm, definitely. I would love for us to now shine the spotlight on you and the book that you've recently launched, that being titled The First Lady of Springbok Rugby. Um, I'm certain that was quite an exciting process to put your 20 years into a book. Tell us a little bit more about what motivated you to write the book and maybe give us an inside scoop as to what we can expect when we purchase the book. Good. Thanks. So the book is not so much my story, but my Springbok rugby journey. And, and it isn't about me, but about the many different personalities, occasions and experiences that made my years on the road with the books so much, you know, special and so remarkable. You know, and I hope the book can educate and inspire supporters um, equally when it comes to the Springboks and the dynamics of, you know, what goes on behind the scene and of, of, a, of a professional sports team. I also hope that it can serve as an aspiration as much as an inspiration for the, you know, for any young person 
you know, um, regardless of gender who wants to get into sport and it can be done. And I'm proof, you know, that it can be done. I worked with several wonderful, you know, talented professionals, many women. I was the first woman that hence my title. Um, you know, then there were two, three, four at the Rugby World Cup. And this was this was, you know, fantastic to have diverse such diversity in the team. And Rusty um in particular, the Springboks were lauded for having four women in the team, which was which was amazing. So I think, you know, the book is very it's just a it's just a journey. It's a nice read. There no there no secrets. There's no there's just fun behind the story. See um, stories that you know people can maybe enjoy and get a get a an insight into what goes on. Absolutely beautiful. I can tell you one thing. I can't wait to put my hands on on that book. And I'm also one of those people that actually love the physical copy. So I'm yeah. certain it will be a great read as well. But I would now like to look at your journey, 20 years as the PR manager for the Springboks. What really stood out for you and what are you most grateful for? Because I'm certain there were some tough times. There were some moments where you really celebrated um, with the lads on the field as well. But in terms of just gratitude, and that's an amazing journey, what are you most grateful for? I think just, the, the, you know, the opportunity of friendships, um, forming family, uh, you know, a family. We were really a family. And no matter who the coach was or who came in and out, the Springboks are a family because sometimes, as you said, you know, there's highs and there's very, very highs, but there's very, very lows, you know, losing, you know, having a losing streak, five, six matches on the road. Um, your job goes on, you know, the player's job goes on. So you have to lift yourself and 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 work on that. So I think the opportunities, the opportunities to work with amazing people, to um to create friendships and um you know, around the world with and learn from different sporting codes. I had an oppor you know opportunities to travel a lot, um, learn from different sporting codes. Because if you can bring some slight little different thing into your job, that can make a big difference. It's all about the marginal gains. Definitely. I mean, that's a key phrase in sports: marginal gains, and that's the only thing that matters at the end of the day. You're locked onto the Sport MBT Insider, a podcast for unrelenting coverage of women in sport. I absolutely love diving deeper into the journeys of our athletes, coaches, and administrators to get to know them a little bit better than we do. Coming up this Wednesday is an interesting round of quick fire questions, a great opportunity for some good laughs and some great banter. Keep it locked onto Sport MBT, where we celebrate our women in sport.